Welcome to the Free Dive Cafe, episode 145 with Miguel Lozano. My name is Donnie. I'm the host of the Free Dive Cafe. The Free Dive Cafe is the long form interview podcast that explores the backstories, the training, the challenges, and the combined wisdom and personal philosophies of the world's free divers. <laughs> no noise. It's been quite a while since I've done this. It's actually a few months since I recorded a podcast. So uh, uh, I'm really happy that I'm doing it with you again, Miguel. It's a pleasure. This is, uh, thank you for, <laughs> for, for coming again to your own place. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's funny because we were discussing that we actually this is our third interview, but we had both forgotten that it yes, was our third yes. because the second one we recorded uh, like a month before COVID happened, and I, yeah. I think that with all the craziness, you know, I had just tried to move to uh, to uh, Bali at that yeah. time, and I think that's when I saw you last actually at Julia's place in Bali. It must have been like January. probably since uh, at that moment in uh, in the pandemic i have a trauma i yeah, don't yeah. remember anything yeah yeah i think we all do yeah <laughs> and that was three years ago it's crazy huh yeah, you know? yeah um well welcome back to the free dive cafe really good to have you here um you are in dahab and it's pure chance that i just came back two weeks ago and then you turned up uh, last week too that you're doing a uh, is it called Deep Camp? Is yeah, that the it's name? Deep Camp, yeah. yeah. So tell us about you know how that works. I was with you guys in the water today for a while. You have about twenty people. Like, what's the deal uh, over the few days that you do that? Well, it's quite uh, quite easy. We just try to give uh, knowledge about uh, training, especially depth, because we are specialized in depth training. So we try to give the ideas that the people need to train smarter and. Uh, so we work basically on, of course, technique, how to move on the water in all the self-proposed disciplines. Then on equalization, either shallow uh, mouthfeel, constant pressure or sequential, uh, to increase the adaptation through the excel diving and the stretching also, both dry and, and in the water, and uh, to increase dive time. How to increase dive time? Because at the end of the day, if you want to go deep, you need to uh be adapt you need to have a good technique to uh, spend less oxygen you need to be able to equalize and you need to increase your dive time no? so these are the main topics we work on these five days to the to give conceptually ideas the people to train smarter rather than just go every day deeper and always uh, uh put the, the head against the same wall yeah, all the time yeah, no yeah yeah. So how does it work over four days? Like, what's the schedule a little bit like to get an idea for? Yeah, uh, we uh, early in the morning, we do the theory for about one hour, one and a half. Not too much because uh, we think people is on holidays and yeah, they want yeah. to, to enjoy to be in the sea. Then we take taxis. We go to Blue Hole. There we do a stretching session where we work on classical stretching on lungs, on diaphragma, on intercostal muscles. Uh, on inhale and packing and uh, full excellent reverse packing um, and then uh, then we go to the water so we have a deep uh, deep uh, enough in the blue hole to to set lines and then we work mainly every day in a different topic either is technique either is a uh, mouthfeel with excel frc diving uh, either is a uh, long dive time and the last day uh, after we work in all the topics, you have a concept of an idea how to go for a deep dive. And then we try deep diving, uh, either constant, either free immersion or either in no limits also. Mm. Yeah, it looks like fun. Uh, there was about 20 people on this uh, on this one, right? Um, it seems like a lot of people, uh, like when you see it from a distance, like a lot of people on the water at the same time. But you, you see that each individual boy has an instructor mm -hmm. and then you have the s people on that said boy. Mm -hmm. So actually, once you get to a boy, it's quite peaceful and, yeah. and chilled out. But yeah, it's a nice... Yeah, uh, at the end, we try to move people, of course, uh, big groups, but we kind of personalize because we have different <coughs> kind of levels from mm -hmm. people going to 70 to people who dive mm -hmm. 15 meters or 10 meters and they want mm -hmm. to join us for this week of training. So... Uh, yeah, there, there is a, a instructor for each buoy, and then mm -hmm. myself, I go from buoy to buoy. I work for 
uh, I go down with every student. We work even a deep diving. We, we are there to uh, make awareness where they tense, uh, that they cannot equalize or they are not relaxed properly or their position is not properly on the free fall. The rhythm is not the, the good one. So we try to adjust all their small mistakes that are making them to fail on the equalization, on the position, on the urge to breathe at depth. So slowly every day we build this knowledge that they need and the confidence that they need, that they are able to dive deeper, but they never had the chance to dive with us uh, deep and to trust them, their own breath hold. No? So mm. this is the work we do during the week. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, good. It looks like fun. Uh, and we try to make it fun. Yeah, yeah. Because we, we are like this, we are a bit yeah. uh, crazy. And I think we believe people do things to enjoy and have mm -hmm. fun. Yeah. We try to be serious and professional, but out of the water, we, yeah. we just like, like uh, to laugh and to have fun. Yeah, I mean, I always like to remind people that uh, as serious as you can take free diving, it's ultimately if you're in a position to be doing this sport in the first place, then you're already very lucky in your life. And uh, to remember that it's a hobby and it's fun and it's a game and you know yeah you can be a sportsman you can be an athlete too but even I think even at the very highest level if you're not enjoying what you're doing then you have to reconsider if it's the, the best choice yeah. for and you. also even if you are a professional you have to take life not too serious yes. I think because there is nothing transcendental we just hold our breath and we go down it's exactly just yeah. free diving mm -hmm. it's a part of our lives it's a lifestyle mm -hmm. because we all I think who are like training and and trying to develop their career, they love. The main thing is they love. And sometimes in this way you may lose the, yeah, the yeah. path because maybe you don't have enough money or mm -hmm. maybe you want to increase your uh, mm -hmm. your uh, school uh, uh, visibility or whatever. But at the end you have to enjoy and uh, we do it for pleasure because we, we love it. Of mm -hmm. course we want to make a living. Um, how tell tell us a little bit about like uh, what you've been doing the last um, uh, three years then because uh, and, and I'm pretty sure like a big part of it is raising your uh, very young children. <laughs> um, you have yeah you haven't really been involved so much in the competition scene and I I've mean, been involved in free diving because free diving is my life and my career so I'm all the time free diving either teaching either <clears> doing uh, photo shooting or documentaries or interviews or uh writing articles uh i wrote a book uh anything this is related to free diving but not related into the competition mm -hmm. lately mm -hmm. i was i've been doing s some training but just for myself i try to keep on a kind of good shape between 80 and 100 meters mm -hmm. like mm, all the year round mm -hmm. maybe before when i was training it was more like 110 115 or this range and then for maximum attempt mm -hmm. I had to, to push mm -hmm. but uh, yeah the last three years I was uh, very focused on after the pandemia focus on the business trying to make it survive well, with mm -hmm. the pandemic mm -hmm. was a bit difficult either here in, in, in Dahab or in Tenerife uh, also with my courses and teaching and working with companies all this stuff but and training in my schools when I go and teach and then do some training, not, not, but not really too much into uh, competition. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's uh, I mean, you must feel quite grateful that through this shit storm of the last three years that have free divers and your place in Tenerife kind of uh, survived. Right. I mean, a yeah. lot of a lot of us, a lot of our colleagues around the world haven't been so lucky. And um, yeah, I mean, you must just be happy that things are kind of getting back to normal slowly now. It's been an effort because uh, for a while we had to keep paying the the, yeah. the rents and yeah. everything and people yeah. working. And in Spain, we had a kind of good because summertime with everything was open, so we could more or less work. Mm -hmm. uh, here we had a little bit more difficult because until they start the flights again and everything. But uh, both sides are amazing places for free diving. So if conditions, uh, situation politically or you know sanitary or whatever are good, people come back. Actually, we saw uh, after the the first six or seven months of pandemic, many people from Europe they came to Dahab to live working remotely uh, because they could not handle anymore mm -hmm. to stay in Europe with yeah. all these rules and mm -hmm. all these problems. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, this increased also the, the awareness of people mm -hmm. that, okay, I can be in Dahab or in Tenerife or in Bali or whatever, mm -hmm. working remotely and mm -hmm. training, no? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we did effort, but I think people also help us to, to, 
keep alive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, last time we spoke, uh, it was a, it was not too long after the uh, World Championships in Nice. Uh, that was a bit of a you know controversial, a bit of a mess, and we discussed that. Um, I wanted to, and I mean, I know this is not the most uh, fun topic, but uh, something that I've been thinking a lot about recently is is whether the 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 the, the format of the free diving competitions, so that even the, down to the disciplines, the the way that it's put together, and I'm not talking about the organizations here. We know the organizations are a fucking mess. They have issues. Yeah, we don't have to <laughs> discuss that for everyone to know about it, but. Uh, I've been thinking recently that maybe the format of the competition, maybe the, the disciplines, you know, maybe we're not we're not giving free diving the best chance, best format to be a, uh, a entertaining competitive sport, um, especially for people who don't know anything about the sport. I mean, what I'm saying is like, if I was sitting down and somebody put the Winter Olympics on, I mean, I could watch snowboarding, I could watch skiing, I could watch the uh, bobsled, whatever, and I'd find some entertainment and it even in, just to be interested to learn something about it. But I feel like freediving is, you know, it doesn't have that kind of uh, image. Are you a fan of the, the format of the competitions or do you, could you envision something better? Well, it's uh, difficult. If I would have the perfect uh, answer, then I would uh, Come organize on, something. But uh, no, I think it's very difficult. I think we are on the right way and we have to test things. Um, but uh, it's not easy because most of us, we get in love of freediving because we try. Maybe when when I was a child, I see Umberto, I see because I love it already, freediving and spear fishing, and I was interested. But most of the people, not. So uh, when you really get hooked is when you try, especially in the therapeutical part. Mm. When you mm-hmm. do uh, mm-hmm. your first static properly, breathing, breathing, relaxation, trying to connect with yourself, trying to go away, then you say, wow, that was amazing. And that mm-hmm. was uh, the first hook. So it's very difficult this to connect with the media because it's a person just holding their breath without yeah. moving. That's mm-hmm. what is difficult. Yeah. In the mm-hmm. depth disciplines, you ha- we have a little bit more because nowadays they're with, with the um, dive eye, with the commentators, with uh, all the uh, all the divers that they are very strong. Of course, it can is more uh, n- nice to see, but it's still three hours of watching people going down mm-hmm, and up. Mm-hmm. If you are not, you don't have the the technical knowledge like we have. Like okay, now he's doing this. Maybe it looks like he's gonna turn because he's doing some movements mm-hmm, of equalization mm-hmm. things that maybe we understand, but for most of the people don't. It's difficult to sell this on on the media, no. And also, I think in free diving we are very uh, fundamentalist. Fundament- we are we are very fundament fundamentalist. Mm-hmm. We are always very worried about what the people think about us, about the, if we black out, if we have the squeezes. Of course, we try to give the best image. But we cannot hide what is our sport, same as boxing or some other uh, sports. So I think we should not be afraid to show that we are holding our breaths. We are pushing as much as we can. We are uh, smart people. We are not crazy. We try to do it the best, but we can make mistakes, same as other sports. No. So I think, uh, well, it's, it's good that the change from 15 years ago, with all the Wi-Fi commentators, the the live stream and everything mm-hmm. is a good direction. Mm-hmm. But I not say, I cannot say there is a other directions. Really, it's mm-hmm. difficult. Okay. Know. Well, I, let me work on the other directions, and then you can tell me what you uh, think about it. Uh, okay. As soon as I find my uh, massively rich sponsors who can pay for my ideas, we'll make it happen. Cool. Um, okay. So what we're gonna do is uh, for for the format of this interview is we're gonna we're gonna uh, discuss ten topics, and I want you to give the single best piece of advice on that topic that you can. Um, I know it's not gonna be easy. Do you know that free divers we have uh, we hold our breath, breath a lot because our s- s- brain is small; it doesn't use too much oxygen. Is this is a right? fact. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. are most yeah. of us. We are stupid. Uh-huh. Oh, I know so, that. Yeah. So. Uh, it's not easy. You ask yeah, me yeah, yeah. Uh, difficult questions. Yeah. Eh? What were we going to talk about again? I forgot already. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> okay. What are you talking about? I'll just make Who something up you? then. <laughs> um, okay, so the first one we're gonna we're gonna talk about is uh, equalization. So the format of the question here is: if you could give 
one piece of advice to somebody, maybe they're not necessarily struggling with their equalization, but if you could give them one piece of advice that is going to elevate their equalization that perhaps they don't know about yet, what would, what would your suggestion be? Well, not easy, but I could say, because nowadays you have a lot of specialists in equalization, people with a lot of knowledge and everything, and you need, of course, knowledge and technique. But what I see many times is the lack of rhythm. Rhythm, I mean, everybody either will go too fast and they have urge to breathe because they spend too much oxygen, or the other way, what is the most normal, people is go too slow. And then when they free fall, their body position is either bending or either uh, they they get tense because it's too slow the free fall so they think they start to doubt about they are not going nowhere mm-hmm. so they the dive time get increased they have urge to breathe early so in the mind they start to stress and then they end up in a technical problem what is equalization mm-hmm. so if you have a nice rhythm at the beginning to break the the surface uh, the, the the positive buoyancy you slow down on the on the phase with between the neutral and the negative buoyancy and you have a nice free fall most of the chances are if your equalization is is normal most of the chances that your equalization is better because you are not having the problem of urge to breathe the body position the tension the mental part because you are going uh one meter per second so you feel that you're going somewhere mm. if you will start to free fall at 25 and you go to 50 in 20 seconds you may have reached the, the, the 50 but if it's too slow you are going at 0.5 let's say mm. then at 35 you start to dab you start to tense and then you you don't let your your lungs to decrease then you your failure that comes uh, shallower and then you cannot equalize and then you have to turn so it's a consequence the lack of rhythm yeah that's a really interesting point that you make there actually and I, it's interesting because if you if you think about it like the best way to observe this is uh if you compare no fins mm. to any other discipline mm. and let's say you're a very proficient uh maybe let's say you dive 30 meters okay like 30 meters free immersion no problem but then you do no fins and compare the, 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 the even just the finding the space for the equalization mm. at the same time as you're coordinating your hands and your arms and mm. you know if you're using mouth fill as well you know it's mm. uh yeah so yeah that's a good point yeah yeah i think we i see many times because i dive with my students i go down with them they are so slow i grab them i push them <laughs> I, I let them know before <laughs> they get scared so just to give them the the, the speed that mm. they they need and mm. the uh, ideal speed that they need for a deep dive so they feel the the the, the speed uh, going down and they are more relaxed mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because otherwise position mm-hmm. goes bad wrong and mm-hmm, so i think mm-hmm. rhythm is a very par- uh, important part of our equalization mm-hmm. uh okay next question um <clears throat> dry training you know if somebody is um Obviously, I mean, we could talk for hours and hours and hours about the possibilities for dry training. People are getting more and more smart, more and more uh, uh, intelligent about uh, the options for dry training and and different things that you can do. Um, What would be the one piece of advice that you would give to somebody or suggestion uh, regarding dry training, Um, especially let's like uh, considering most of those people will probably be staying in a place where they don't have easy access to depth. Uh, I would say that, um, you know, before I was very skeptic about uh, training on the gym because uh, I was living in a place where I could have access to the sea, mm-hmm. either here or in Canary Islands or in whatever in the world. So I, they tell me, let's go to the gym. I said, I'm not going to go to the gym. I have to go to the sea. So I think a specific training, this is the main thing mm-hmm. for deep training. But as we say that they are, don't have access to that, then I would say that, of course, you feel strong. It depends the mentality. Me, for me, was more about adaptation rather than physically. Mm. Never I felt too weak, too, mm. too tired. So it was more about adaptation. So I would say that the limitation, it doesn't come because you don't have a strong, super strong legs or super strong arms or you are used to CO2 tables or whatever. Um, rather to be adapt the flexibility that you work on on the stretching mm-hmm. and uh, on the full in L with mm-hmm. packing and reverse packing mm-hmm. so flexibility i think is more important if i would say choose yeah. one 
rather yeah. to be very strong because yeah. me i went to 105 meters on constant weight in a in a monofin without never being in a gym and i'm not a, i'm a skinny yeah. guy after two bottles of wine right uh, yes but this is just to give me the, the <laughs> power but uh or free immersion i was doing 122 without doing any gym exercise mm-hmm. in my in my body mm-hmm. or even i didn't do uh mm-hmm. training in series of co2 tables on the pool mm-hmm. i was mm-hmm. doing a specific training on the sea so i got used to it mm-hmm. mentally physiologically mm-hmm. uh, technically and also mm-hmm. maybe physically but also i get tired so that's why now i think it's good to go to the gym to get strong, to don't be so tired mm. after a long time training on the sea. But for most of the people, if you are not Alexei or Arnaud Gerard, all these people that they need to train on the gym to be super strong, most of the people that what they need is a bit of adaptation yeah. to feel yeah. comfortable and relaxed. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, I, obviously you have way more experience in this than me, but I'm also coaching some people now as well. And mm. for me, the, uh, it's the, the a- adaptation of the thoracic cage mm. And everything that is attached to it is hmm. absolutely the most key key point. There is some people say that uh, you uh, train and after two years you come back and you don't need any kind of adaptation. But I don't think it's true because they say that, but they, they don't reach their personal best. Or maybe their personal best hmm. was not too deep hmm. to need an adaptation. Hmm. But for most of us, me, if I go now to 120, I probably squeeze. Because I've been three years without going to that depth, yeah, so yeah, yeah. either I do it on, on on the sea or either I'm doing it on dry. And you let me choose, made me choose one. So I would say, if now I go, I have one year and I can have, I only have to choose one thing. I would be stretching every day yeah, for in yeah. one year going for yeah, a deep yeah. diving, so rather than go to the gym. Right. So the answer of the question is focus on thoracic cage flexibility. Yeah. All is involved, all your body, you know, like Mm -hmm. a swimmer Mm -hmm. to move like flexible, but of course, especially the thoracic and the lungs. Yeah, yeah, I haven't dived for three months before I came back and I'm really, really feeling it. I mean, I'm struggling with, I think I did 35 yesterday and it was, I was feeling a little bit tired, you know, (laughs) Um, but also just everything else, the sensations in the chest and the equalization. Sure, I know it's going to come back quicker than somebody who didn't do have it before but it's um, be sh- and be sure that it's amazing how the body let's say when you go to uh, mountains the adaptation is very important and it's amazing how if you have the time let's say you now okay i come for that for one month the, from the first dive to uh, in the last day of the, the of the month it's amazing how your change of your physiology mm-hmm. uh, f- physiology change mm-hmm. how your breath hold how your adaptation mm-hmm. your, your mind everything just in one month of mm. or half or half month mm. or two months, whatever you can. But if you give time, your body adapts very fast. Mm. Yeah, I mean, free. What this made me realize is, and free divers uh, instructors are always complaining about the fact that they're so busy with instructing that they never have time to train. No. But I've been free diving for six years, and this last three months is the first time that I wasn't running my school, uh, doing any diving, and. The, the, the life of the ins- busy instructor is actually really the best way to maintain your mm. like fundamental adaptation mm. for free diving. It's kind of like a base camp, like Everest base camp mm. where you can go on to like new depths. But if you're not doing anything, pff, oh, it's tough. Sure. It's true that if you want to really train and you are working, it's difficult to combine. Mm. Uh, maybe the best you can do, that's what I did before. I never had a... Uh, sponsors or something that i just do free diving as a competition so i was teaching and then i had this base of teaching that my breath hole i did a lot of where i dive with my student many times is on excel so i train every time i dive but then after this i took a stop so no working now i train so i have the base then i go for training and then i have the time for the competition of course you want to train while you teach because you're tired, you take the car or the boat yeah. two miles there, come <clears> back with all the weight, uh, and then you want to train. So at the end, you get very tired, especially in freediving, that is very physiological adaptations yeah, yeah. and training. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I suggest try to divide the year in parts, not try to mix all together. Yeah. Because it's gonna yeah. be difficult. Though. Yeah, I mean that 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 is uh, okay. Let's say that was question three. And the question was advice to instructors who wish to get deeper. And you answered the question. And uh, you know what you said there? It's um, uh, 
there's a lot of people here, for example, that uh, are in that situation where they're teaching, maybe even freelancing, so maybe not working through the school, but teaching, you know, not even that much, but um, not progressing in depth also because they they go day by day get it, choosing a student and then like maybe going training and then say oh i've got a f i've got three days free let's go and do some training and this kind of inconsistency is not going to lead to good results over time so i think you know what you're saying is like you need to actually make a point to schedule the times that you will be able to train and the times that you focus on the teaching right yeah it's it's not easy because i i never plan like that I came to live to the hub because I love free diving and I didn't even care about competition or about training or teaching. I was just wanted to dive mm -hmm. as a, like a lifestyle, like a climber. Climbers, if you go to Yosemite, Yosemite yeah, you, and you ask there. them, yeah. what is your goal? Yeah. I want to yeah. climb every L day. Live, live in this valley. I want in to my live band. here yeah, yeah, forever. Yeah, 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 well, yeah, forever. Yeah, yeah. After 10 years, they say, no, I want a family or whatever. Yeah. But at that moment, when you are young and you're traveling around the world and of course you have to find the balance between the, the your money that you save and uh, and want to spend mm -hmm. that's why free divers or climbers they try to spend as less as they can because they want to train that's what i did so even i remember dan verhoven when he was here i was living here and he, he asked me one day in blue hole what, what what's your plan for today and I didn't know what to answer because I didn't have a plan never. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So and that was the first time I knew people had a plan <laughs> because they they came from England for two weeks mm -hmm. and they need to have a plan. Yeah, because yeah for two sure. Weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for me, I, I didn't have time, a problem of time. Of course, my money, my savings will will last until some time. But until then, I'm, I'm not in a rush. Mm. So I didn't have any rush on training so i i didn't have frustration i didn't have like uh, to 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 make hurry on the training and everything and i think this is one of the very important things because in freediving even if you are at, at good level like i say alexei uh, uh, petar all these guys they have the the, the, the physical the technical the mental the adaptation everything of course they need to plan to focus on a a special target for year for a competition but for most of the other people what they need is a lot of water with their mistakes with their problems with uh, their uh, um, uh, success and with this is the build the the knowledge no and of course as you say later on if you can you lose the, you don't have any much money uh, to just train then you have to figure out to say okay let's see three months that's what people do here okay three months are in high season i work hard mm -hmm. i save money and then the next two months i'm gonna train mm -hmm. and then if i have some sponsor then i go to a competition yeah. okay so that nicely leads us into uh, the next topic then which i think will be number four which is um okay so let's use myself for an example um i'm here for the whole year this is going to be the first time that i've ever actually had a year in a place with depth that I can really train and let's say I mean I'm not really that into the whole competition thing but I I would like to maybe go to the competition in October just to kind of like see where I've, I've got to test myself yeah so <clears throat> with a kind of a six month uh, block now do you have any advice on how I'm going to periodize that that block um, uh, and I've just said three months out of the water completely yeah I would say here is a good place now that you can periodize your your base training, your dry training, combine it with the, the sea. It's true that at the beginning, myself, I was so uh, skeptical about training in the gym. So mm. if I have seven days, I go seven days to the sea because I never push when I didn't want to push and I was not too tired. So every day I, I wanted to do the sea. And some days I just was fun diving, going to the reef, just play. So not every day had to be related to uh, to be in the rope uh but nowadays there is gym there is a uh, supplementation that you have mm -hmm. uh, access to yoga or other things that you can combine mm. okay so i would say that maybe is you you take less uh, uh important to the depth okay um I would say, for example, you put some, now that the water is a bit colder, like 22, uh, you go two, three times a, a week in the sea. I that's what I would say, mm. to not get too, too tired and too mentally wasted to mm -hmm. push, mm -hmm. just like long breath holes, 
passive excel diving, uh, technique, all, all of these that you don't need to really do depth. In reality, you play in this, uh, let's say, 30, 50 meters of range mm -hmm. during mm -hmm. the, uh, two, three mm -hmm. months, but combine it with gym training mm -hmm. to get stronger yeah. and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Not because you need this muscle to go deeper also, but when you will go for a deep diving every day, mm. you will it's catabolic yeah. sport, and yeah. you start to lose, and then you don't have you're too tired to go yeah. to the gym. So you you kind of build this base, mm. physically base mm. for for that period. And then when in two three months the water will be 26, 27, mm. 28, mm. you can start to work to to dive with one two three millimeters mm. uh, wetsuit. What is easier for a deep diving? And then you start to working on a deep dive combined with some pool training mm. also, like CO2 tables and all the stuff. And then if October is the date, I would say around September, I would start to push every two days a deep dive, right. two or three days mm -hmm. a deep dive kind of, mm -hmm. okay, to be able to recover, but to work also on adaptation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. That <clears throat> there is many ways. Many ways, I yeah. I, I, before, I would never do that. Yeah. I would go... October, okay. I train until October in the sea yeah, every yeah, day. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then I realized that I was tired, yeah, mentally yeah. wasted, and mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I, my 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 the very very basic plan at the moment, and of course uh, I'm gonna actually I, I I write a schedule for myself. I do uh, plan things, but um, not like dive by dive, just general idea mm. for the for the week or yeah. the month yeah. and my general idea is actually going to be for the first time to limit myself for example for the whole month of april i told myself i'm not going to go deeper than 50 mm. because i know i could i know that within two weeks i can be diving 75 again mm. if i push but i know that i'm not going to be super comfortable mm. i might squeeze my throat i might do some i might just not enjoy my dives mm. so see like explore the world between zero and 50 and get really comfortable there and then if i feel super comfortable then spend time at 50 hanging around and, and this kind of also thing also it's important for example if you want to go to 90 meters let's say mm. a little bit closer I mean, you uh, if you want to go to these 90 meters you can repeat the first 30 meters many times mm. so mm. then the first phase of the dive mm -hmm. is done hundreds yeah. of times so it's so mechanized for yourself that it's easy for you yeah. then later and then you can work on the second phase from 30 to 90 on the free fall mm -hmm. like this 60 meters free fall working on passive excel from mm -hmm. 10 to 50 mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. 10 to 60 if you mm -hmm. are able to work on this yeah, passive yeah, excel yeah, yeah. dive or a bit overweighted to have a early free fall uh, and then increase your dive times to be able to do, okay, 90 meters, it will be a three minutes dive time. So you'll be able to do dive times maybe to 30 or 40, but three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, six minutes. Mm -hmm. Increase your dive time to increase your, your breath hole. So work on equalization, one or, or all these exercises that you can work to make uh, this. Uh, I understand because for me it's difficult to limit myself. Yeah. I yeah. come here, I say, no, I'm not going to push more than 70, yeah. 80. And then I start to go down, oh, I feel good, boom. Yeah. And I go to the bottom and say, mm, maybe yeah. I push a bit much. Yeah, that, that's that's like why it's so different this year for me because I I have the space to to do that. But if you only have a month or you only have three weeks or something, then you it's very hard to contain yourself yeah, and to, to resist the Now temptation. I understand yeah. because now when I train, I have a limited time yeah. because I have a child, I have to work there, yeah, I do yeah. this, so I have this. Now I understand that. But before, when I started and I came here, I, I didn't have any goal, any expectation. I just wanted to be in the yeah, water yeah, every yeah. day as much yeah. time as I, ca I could. So that's why I didn't understand when the people, they periodize and organize mm -hmm. everything. And I think it's a bit of, it depends on the level. If it's, you're very beginner, I think you lose the path of free diving because mm -hmm. the good thing of free diving is uh, diving with your friends every day, going mm -hmm. to the sea, train yourself, rest properly, eat good. So you build all this uh, this uh, knowledge in the sea of yourself, of your buoyancy, your rhythms, everything that makes you more aware when you try to go for a deep diving. You yeah, know? and I think it's missing a bit this uh, philosophy yeah. lately yeah. from. It's normal, no? People want to achieve goals, get mm -hmm. records, competition, yeah. make a living. Yeah, I mean that's uh, it's kind of the. This is it's interesting you say that because it's a little bit like the the way the, the 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 history of the podcast. You know, I started off with um, you know being a very kind of like uh, uh, aspirational and like uh, you know like spiritual and like you know a bit philosophy and the feeling the water and then 
I guess because I was interviewing so many athletes and then I was starting to get deeper and getting technical and getting mm-hmm. scientific. And then there, there became a stage in the podcast where there's a lot of like athletes and like we're talking a lot about training. And then, you know, like I was saying to Esra before, you know, now I'm swinging more towards actually uh, more about people and about their 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 journey and their experience mm. through free diving, you know, especially talking about dealing with trauma and, mm. in, uh, you know, uh, mental issues anxiety depression and things like that so mm. yeah we've swamped we've kind of come full circle to to you not not forgetting that yeah free diving is a sport and it's amazing to be a, a top level athlete bloody bloody blah but yeah. ultimately like free diving is much more than that and we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that it's um For special sure. in other ways yeah. we have to come back uh, sometimes myself i have to remind me why i started yeah because uh, was not for the money mm-hmm. was not for the recognition was yeah. not for for a job for no, not nothing of those mm-hmm. were in my mind mm-hmm. because i wanted just to live in a place where i could dive every day mm-hmm. because i was so in love of free diving mm-hmm. so sometimes when you push yourself when you have a squeeze and you spit blood and you have a competition say ah, it's okay i keep on going then we have uh, marks from i remember my first world record attempt in 2012 in vertical blue I was so free that it was easy diving for me 120 because I was diving in Mediterranean, in Atlantic, and was rougher seas. And then I arrived to Vertical Blue and was, what is this? Mm-hmm. It's so easy. Thin mm-hmm. suit, mm-hmm. warm water, mm-hmm. no thermoclines. Wow, but so easy to, to reach these depths. But after 10 years later, during this journey, I lost uh, a friend. I lost uh, another friend having a squeeze. Uh, I had myself uh, accidents. I saw myself pushing when I didn't have to push. So all this gave me scarves. Mm-hmm. So now mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. less free than 10 years ago yeah. to yeah. dive. Yeah. Because I yeah. love free diving, but I love living also. Yeah. What We know that free diving is a very safe sport. But we are humans. Mm-hmm. We have emotions and we have blogs and we have to understand uh, when and how and why we do things, no? Unless you are kamikaze and you just uh, don't yeah. care, no? Mm-hmm. So I think this is very, very interesting thing that not to put too mystical, but to be able to surround, to to accept, uh, in this case, depth, mm-hmm. pressure, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. hold holding your breath, all this stuff. No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm. I'm a- I uh, lost my dive watch, you know, last year, and I decided not to get another one. And uh, you know, because last <laughs> last very year, good. last year I was training and I was putting in my log, and it was like dive number one, thirty-five meters, <laughs> two minutes nineteen, you know, and then like me, I could dive never do this. <laughs> dive, you know, RV fifteen point <laughs> seven meters, and then you're like, why the fuck do I need to know that it was fifteen point nine and not fifteen point four? You know, so. Now I got a little decathlon watch so I can do safety yeah. for people, yeah. but uh, the dive watch, I'm I not going to bring it I think this is very good. No? Yeah. It depends the personality. Every person is different. Some mm-hmm. people need this the, to be mm-hmm. so analytic. Yeah. Yeah. Me, I don't need it because yeah. I go by sensation. Yeah. So actually, when I put alarms, I hate alarms mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. it gave me an expectation. Yeah. Yeah. So you have alarm at 70 yeah. and I'm free falling and it's still not yeah, a fucking yeah, alarm. Yeah, exactly. I yeah. was anxious. Yeah. And then I, yeah. I, I took the alarms. I didn't like it. But yeah. of course, when you do a uh, very big dive, at least for me, that was big dives, uh, four or five minutes dive, 120 meters. I wanted to be more precise and more technical. Then I had to put these yeah, alarms. Yeah. But for beginners, I try to tell them, maybe they need it, they like it, but I try to tell to get used to, okay, maybe the alarm that they give you 20, but maybe in this sea, th- this is not the way, the, mm-hmm. the, the place where to do the free fall because mm-hmm. maybe you are too too light Mm -hmm. because maybe you gain some kilos uh, eating chocolate maybe Mm -hmm. the salinity of the place Mm -hmm. maybe your wetsuit is a bit thicker or new the small things that you have to do it by sensations rather than just the alarms Mm -hmm. but well everyone has their own yeah i mean that that's that's the thing for me is that uh, i i understand the the value of um having the alarms and also the value Mm. but now i want to explore how much of the feeling how many sensations were I missing in the dive because I was thinking about the alarm coming or mm. did the alarm happen already mm. or et cetera, et cetera. So yeah. well, I think I'll go down that path for a while and see, see where it takes Umberto, me. Umberto Pellizzari always say that he, he didn't realize that he was doing this job uh, during his dives until he 
recognize it and then he could equalize deeper but he never was aware about it. he was pushing like that mm. so uh, umberto who has a lot of experience mm -hmm, he mm -hmm. is still uh, learning yeah, yeah, yeah. we mm -hmm. we all uh, learning yeah. every time that we dive yeah. so it's important and beginners mm -hmm. help you a lot to to discover yeah. things that you me sometimes even i explain yeah. to beginners muffle mm -hmm. Because it's easy, it's good for them to understand that maybe they need some air or how to uh, open the soft palate or maybe keep the the, the constant pressure to don't uh, close the soft palate mm -hmm. or maybe to don't get the tongue stuck on the back. Mm -hmm. So things that maybe sh they don't need for because they're not gonna have to go so deep, mm -hmm. but they give you uh, knowledge. So but you never know. Yeah. Um, so coming on to the uh, fifth topic, uh, you. You mentioned about squeezing and you mentioned about injury and even, you know, about uh, death, you know. Um, <clears throat> for somebody who is uh, experiencing uh, squeeze, you know, regardless of where it's happening, um, what, is, what advice would you, would you give? You know, this is kind of the, the, the one thing in freediving that, um, you know, like you say, freediving is an extremely safe sport, but we, we can't deny the fact that a large percentage of the people who get involved in it uh, end up uh, experiencing this issue of uh, uh, lung or throat or whatever kind of barrel trauma mm. and uh, don't often go about dealing with it in a sensible way. Mm. What would your advice be to them? Yeah, well, it's, it's not easy because every person is different. Mm -hmm. Every person have a different approach and they, they have different uh, physiology also either with the uh, CO2 tolerance mm -hmm. or either with the pressure. So I would say what it helped me a lot, it was passive excel diving. I know some instructors or some athletes, they don't like it and they hate it. Uh, but I think for me it was the most important exercise that I have ever done to repeat many times depth, uh, shallow depth, but uh, simulating deep mm -hmm. diving because I could go 60 70 mm -hmm. meters on passive excel so this is more or less the same per, uh, volume i would have 120 with the full lungs i had a free fall position that i can work with my equalization so i uh, sorry i dissociate this area to this area so many times the people who are trying to equalize they tense mm -hmm. they tense the the hips and then that makes the diaphragma more more tense and then the, this leads on, uh, into a into a squeeze or maybe they have to urge to breathe so they try to control the the, glo uh, the 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 air on the mouth but then they have contractions and this makes them uh, squeeze so the uh, the excel passive excel diving it helped me a lot i don't say full excel because i think it's a bit aggressive mm. and there is no transition from uh, rb diving to a deep dive unless you are uh, Matt Malina or Herbert Needs or people who need to go so deep that they have, they have access to shallow water some, most of the time. So, of course, they do RB to get some adaptation. Like Killian Jornet is working in the mm. epoxy chamber at home before going to the Everest. No? But um, uh, if you work on, on Passive Excel, you have all these uh, exercise, sorry, all these exercise in terms of free fall, equalization, body position, uh, adaptation, uh, especially adaptation uh, for that, that it give you this adaptation mm. for a deep diving. No, mm. uh, urge to breathe, CO2 tables help to have contractions later, so that's very important mm. uh, in terms of don't have contractions on the but on the bottom. No? For CO2 tables, I mean, I get the feeling that pretty much everybody has moved away from yeah. the classic CO2 table sitting in your bedroom uh, doing a CO2 table for you know 45 minutes you know with like i saw someone post one the other day it was like two minute rests between every uh every two minute breath hold you know it was kind of funny but uh so in, in terms of co2 do you mean specifically going into the pool or actually doing something in depth no i would say more in the pool uh it can be probably better to move to do dynamic mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh, rather mm -hmm, than static mm -hmm. because on on mm -hmm. this, you can work with uh, mm -hmm. lact uh, yeah. uh, lactate, acyl acyl lactic, yeah. and all this stuff. Yeah, I do. Uh, I, I program it uh, with apnea walks for uh, mm -hmm. you know combining static mm -hmm. and apnea walks mm -hmm. in a in a CO two type table for uh, people, uh, which is pretty pretty brutal actually. Yeah, it's, it's pretty hard, but it's effective. You know, it, yeah. it gets pretty good results. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like you say, you should be moving. You know, it's everything is combined. <clears throat> you can. Uh, 
if your duck dive is bad, if your feeling is bad, if you have uh, you're too light and you have uh, you fight a, a lot with the buoyancy mm-hmm. uh, because instructors we tend to put less weight to the people, mm-hmm. but they mm-hmm. make it makes them so tired that mm-hmm. they have to breathe early and yeah. they have to turn because yeah. they cannot equalize yeah. because they are tense. Mm-hmm. So that's why we say we are very fundamentalists. Mm-hmm. It's like uh, um, how you say uh, m- in free diving we don't hyperventilate. Yeah. This is the, the evil, yeah. no. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. most of top free divers yeah. in the pool they hyperventilate they to, like yeah, like yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we need to show the people to tell the people. Yeah. One thing is recreational freediving and yeah. one thing is competitive freediving yeah. because these people, they do it yeah. for a reason. Yeah, they know what they're doing. They would know well. what they're yeah. doing. Yeah. You yeah. don't do it, but yeah. you can explore. Yeah. We ex- uh, in my courses, we sometimes explore the hyperventilation yeah. Yeah. and breath yeah. hold. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why not? Just mm-hmm. to let them know that breathing is a powerful uh, tool, but you have to do it with knowledge yeah. and when mm-hmm. to do it mm-hmm. and how to do it, no? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. as much as I, you know, I appreciate the uh, education materials and the education organizations. Uh, I mean, Ida did a good job and, you know, Molchinov has done a good job. And it's um, if you just, yeah, I think a lot of instructors, when they start their instructing journey, they, be, they do become very fundamentalist about these ideas because they've read it in the manuals and of course they have instructor standards. But I, over, you know, I think we're, we're all experiencing over time that we, as our knowledge and our wisdom about free diving deepens, we have to open up our, uh, you know, our discussion about certain things. So I, I recently wrote an article. Um, uh, it, was a, I think it was 10 essential free diving safety guidelines but i had to so i wrote the uh the the introduction but then at the underneath that i had to write these uh, you know uh all of these guidelines sometimes do not apply <laughs> you know like uh, unle- but unless you know exactly sure. what you're doing uh, um don't don't teach yourself free diving from youtube or the uh-huh. internet or from yeah. facebook you know this is the job of the instructor trainers yeah. <clears throat> because when i teach instructors I try to go on the standards and everything that ne- they need to understand, but also I need I try to to teach them as a as a free divers, so they can pass this knowledge to the to the newer students. Mm-hmm. So not always you have to be just so conservative. Sometimes mm-hmm. sometimes even I see instructors that they put the line five meters, mm-hmm. ten meters. So they they try to to. Uh, reduce the risks of their students, limiting them. And sometimes freediving, I think it limits people by itself because when you go down, most of the time you start to dive and then woof, you turn, yeah. it's normal. Yeah. So even I mean, if I would be on the surface waiting, most of the times they will never have a, an accident yeah. because people is conservative. Yeah, of I mean, course we go down because we do the safety, you know? I've, I mean, I've, I've, I've had hundreds of students. I can't remember anyone ever just like, diving too deep too quickly yeah. you know it's like yeah. that almost never happens yes, yeah exactly no and if this happened if you put a line this is impossible yeah. and yeah. they either they break their eardrums or whatever but um it's not like diving diving you breathe underwater mm-hmm. and you don't feel any sense of of uh of um of fear because you're breathing mm-hmm. and if you don't, don't know nothing about uh, hyperoxia about narcosis about the uh, lung expi- uh uh, expansion on the way up mm. you don't think that diving is is uh, risky yeah. because you're breathing but in free diving it's very clear yeah. that mm-hmm. uh, okay i'm not gonna push too much because i'm too far no from yeah. the surface yeah um all right let's uh what we're gonna do now is we're gonna talk about each uh, discipline and your best advice suggestion for people wishing to get better in that discipline. And I would like to say for the record that I don't really like free diving disciplines as they are right now. I want to invent new ones, so watch this space. Um, <laughs> but while we still have these um, uh, these ones, um, let's start with static. You have a good static, but you also have like 900 liter lungs or something like that, right? <laughs> No, I have. A, now, I've been checking the uh, the sound, and actually, you know, like most of the time, your voice is you project so much, yeah. you project that it's picking up quite nicely. You know, <laughs> it's just when you turn to the side. It yeah, that's the it. problem. I forget it, but um, I always train fr- uh, static just to be better on the deep, on depth. No, I wasn't. I actually I like the therapeutical part of static 
to re be relaxed after a long day, go to the pool, breathe and relax. Mm -hmm. I don't enjoy go to eight or nine minutes. It's not my pleasure. Mm -hmm. I did it because I wanted to trust my breath hole to go deeper. That's why I translated um, eight minutes static in the pool and I did seven minutes static on depth, but going to 60 meters. Mm -hmm. So I try mm -hmm. to trust my breath hole that is enough to go for, di for deep. So I don't have to relay my safety yeah. on it's others. A confidence, uh, it's, a, it's a confidence. Yeah. So a static, you know, if you talk with Herbernish, he say hyperventilate and that's it. Go to the, uh, the maximum you can. But uh, there is no, there is no, I don't have a, like a specific, uh, sorry, a specific uh, tip to say rather than uh, try to com to be completely relaxed, to enjoy and to have a, a, a goal for what you're doing this. If you mm -hmm. want to be the best in the world in a static, then of course you have to push and you are mm -hmm. going to suffer your career because mm -hmm. it's very hard discipline yeah. to train mentally. Yeah. But if you want to do it because of me, like me, I had a, a, a goal to increase my depth, then it was easy for me mm -hmm. because it was not the goal to stay in the pool mm -hmm. training mm -hmm. for the next 10 years. No? Yeah. Yeah, that's... that's um, um, I'm just... yeah off topic there for a second in my own head um but you you said there that you did uh seven minutes in depth going to 60 meters but maybe for people who are listening just to clarify that you didn't take like three and a half minutes to go down right no i did uh, an exercise where you know when i was doing these 120 meter dives there is a phase I could not, a uh, part of the dive that I could not really train. That was from 80 to 120 because I needed to go to 120 to do this. And I wanted to repeat this, this part of the dive many times. Why? Because I had early contractions around 80, 90 meters, have my first contractions. This can lead into squeeze mm. and can lead into swallowing my mouth and the discomfort of free falling with urge to breathe, trying to be relaxed. So I say, okay, how can I do it instead to go to 60 meters and do a hang that also can work, but in terms of DCS and in terms of uh, safety is a bit compromised. Mm. I say, okay, I'm going to do an exercise that I could increase my dive time, but also I can, uh, I'm not completely relaxed in the pool, what is a bit tiring for me, but I can move, concentrate on my equalization, my position, my, my, my mouth. So in a technical exercise. So I go 10 meters. Neutral buoyancy. My mind is like I'm gonna do a six, seven, eight meters di uh, dive, uh, dive time, like a static. Mm. Okay, so I try to move the less I can. Like uh, uh, even if I lose technique, I don't care. So I go ten meters and I hold there. My first contractions on a static in a good day starts at four minutes, three thirty, four minutes. So I had an alarm, and when the when the alarm comes at around four, I know. That if it's a good day uh, and I don't have contractions, I can stay more. And if I have contractions, more or less, I know where I am. Then I turn, I pull, I do mouthfeel, and then I free fall. So on the from this 10 to 60 ah, meters, okay. I free fall for 50 meters. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So I'm concentrated on my equalization, uh -huh. on relaxation, but I'm with contractions. Mm -hmm. So I work this 80, 100 meter uh, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm part of the dive mm -hmm. and then I go slow up mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. during my three four minutes there mm -hmm. plus the 50 seconds of free fall mm -hmm. plus the 60 meters slow coming up yeah. then I reach this yeah. six yeah, seven minutes dive that time. makes a lot of sense and that's very interesting and that's also something that you should not try at home folks <laughs> yeah <laughs> come to my big camera yes. I teach you <laughs> so slowly slowly um okay um let's talk about the the discipline that you're really shit at constant weight I'm not really shit. Oh, okay. I did 108. <laughs> it's not bad. 108 is nothing these days, man. Of uh, course. I'm, I'm only, why you want to go more? No, I'm there only, is not nothing enjoyable well, after you 108. Know, you know, 108 is a very auspicious number. This is like the most important number in Hindu philosophy. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. You know the the mala, the beats they use. You know the the mala that they use. Yes, yes, yes. Sure, sure, sure. 108 beats. Really? Yeah. Okay. That's One, why I stopped there. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, uh, that's why I say after 100 days uh, there is nothing. Yeah. There is the emptiness. Yeah. yeah. You don't need it. Well, I mean, of course, I'm joking. You are an absolute legend, and you are no. one of the deepest people that's ever uh, no, lived. No, it's, it's true that. Sorry to disturb to, to disturb you, but uh, when I was, uh, I never did free immersion until I reached 100 meters in constant weight. So when I was doing 100 meters in constant weight with the with the monofin back like 
15 years ago mm. uh, that was not many people doing 100 meters. So I was super happy, but I get dismotivated. I say, now what now? 105, 110. I was a bit dismotivated. I say, okay, let's try another discipline. And then I found out free immersion. Mm. I start to go deep, but always I combine it. But uh, in monofin, I'm uh, very bad. Mm. I, I bend my knees and mm -hmm. I do it. So imagine if I could do have a good technique, maybe mm. I could go 109 well, you never or something. Know, maybe the future. <laughs> um, so w in t for constant weight, then uh, what would your advice be to someone who's uh, starting out with a monofin? Like, I mean, I've never put one on. I mean, I've had I've had one on once, but yeah. I've never never in depth. So let's like, say tomorrow I'm going out. Somebody's going to let me try their monofin out, and I, I want to take a couple of weeks to try and get some depth and, and constant weight. What would be your advice be? I would say uh, the, the, the rhythm is again very important because everything that you do, you will pay on the bottom. So all every movement, every uh, uh, all the move of uh, the rhythm that you take, some people go too fast, as I told you, or too slow. Then the free fall is uh, is not good because of the uh, of the speed. So and especially in constant way that you start to use your mm -hmm. big muscles and then you start to produce lactic acid. So <clears> it depends <throat> what kind of free diver you are. If you are Stefan Toro, that you are super fast and you do 100 meters in two minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, for them, for him, it's good to go fast, and he's very strong athlete with big legs. But for me, if I go this fast, when I start my free fall, I have already urge to breathe. Mm. I have pain in my legs. I cannot ha handle my 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 mouth feel. So I need to go slower. So my heart rate is down, and uh, I can be relaxed on my free fall. No. So first, you have to find which is your. Mm. Uh, profile mm -hmm. as a free diver. Mm -hmm. If you are a long dive free, uh, free diver or you, uh, shorter, me always people told me, ah, you go too slow, you will never be able to go deep. And then I show them show that them. I could yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah. Of course, at the end I have to adjust because I could not go 120 in seven minutes, but uh, I could start to go faster mm -hmm. to to get the balance between what I spend and the time uh, to be to be balanced. No. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would say this is important about the the rhythm to to mm -hmm. be mm -hmm. relaxed on the uh, on the free fall mm -hmm. phase. Yeah, I, I like the point you made there, like uh, that you know, kind of what what you do on the way down. Like you have to pay the debt on the way up, right? You know, whether it's oxygen debt or CO two debt mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. or you know going too fast or going too slow. So yeah. but sometimes you pay not on the way back; you pay down uh, there you know, as you're get, reaching yes, the bottom. because yeah, you cannot. Yeah. Maybe you you yeah. end up not equalizing before yeah. your normal equalization because mm -hmm. you are stressed. Yeah. Okay. Um, free immersion. Free immersion. Um, I think free immersion in free diving is very. They don't have a good, uh, let's say, how I say, uh, publicity advertisement, no? Because ah, this is not free diving because you're pulling down an app. Yeah. It's funny because Will Trubridge was talking not too long ago about kind of removing it from competitions. Yeah, I don't. Which is I, funny because he's also quite deep in, uh, in free yeah, immersion. Yeah. Well, I, I don't think. But every person has different ideas, uh, but. I believe that most of the divers, what I teach, mm. they love free diving. They, they love free immersion. Yeah. Of course, they can change, and, and I love all of them. I actually I love all the no fin disciplines mm. more because I, when I was child, yeah. I never had fins. I always play with without the fins, mm. so it's, it's more uh, natural for me than than the, the, the finning. Uh, but uh, what would be like the main the main thing that people the main mistake that people make or the main concept that people don't understand about free immersion that would help them? I would say that they go too slow because they think free immersion is for a warm up mm -hmm. exercise, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you you don't realize how hard it could be until you don't go really deep. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a huge difference between the the forty meter free immersion profile and the 70, 80, 90 meter free immersion profile. The mm. things it's the, the whole flavor changes Change. when you start going deeper. Change. Yeah, and I understand that, of course, if you do a free immersion to thirty and constant weight to thirty, a lot of difference. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, if you really want to go deep in free immersion, things change mm -hmm. because you have you don't have nothing to propose, mm -hmm. so dive time are increased. Mm -hmm. You have to deal uh, with the position of your body mm -hmm. because uh, you don't have a, a fin to play, to, mm -hmm. to adjust your yeah, movements, yeah. Uh, because you have much more narcosis, because you are mm -hmm. more under a, a, a depth yeah. without releasing mm -hmm. from the depth. Mm -hmm. 
uh, you need adaptation because this movement mm-hmm. can be aggressively down there. And mentally, when you are 120 meters and you have to go mm-hmm. slow, mm-hmm. Uh, you are you have to be strong. Mm-hmm. You have to trust your breath yeah. hold. So I think these things only can talk people who's been down there mm-hmm. uh, or just, okay, they give their opinion, but just without the knowledge to be down there. No, mm-hmm. I'm not saying what is harder or not than 100 meters, no fins. For me, it was easy to do 90 meters. My personal best in no fins is 88. For me, it was easier to do 88 in, in no fins than 120. Why? Because I knew that at 88, if I have any problem, I pull up. You pull up, yeah. Mm-hmm. But at 120, yeah. I only can pull up. Only can pull up, yeah. So if yeah. I have any problem, yeah, yeah. any problem, something broke, the mental uh, game, yeah. I get attached to something, mm-hmm. or I have a narcos or something, I only have this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because this is worst, or wait until somebody pu- uh, pull me up. Yeah. So uh, for me, it was mentally, I sleep pretty good. Because, okay, I knew it's going to be hard physically, mm-hmm. and I'm going to have... a. Uh, uh, my legs and my arms and this, but I w- was uh, I didn't have any any problem, and I never trained too much no fins to to be super good. Mm. I I got a kind of good level, but because I was uh, good on free immersion, not because I trained specifically no fins. No? So yeah, I think uh, it's important to to the rhythm again. I I know I'm repeating. But rhythm is important in free immersion because mm-hmm. people go too slow mm-hmm. and then they have a very bad f- uh, free falling uh, speed, free falling position, mm-hmm. and then these end up into uh, early contractions, lack of co- uh, equalization, and all this. Yeah, yeah. I think one of the best pieces of advice that I, I got o- on this show was actually from Julia uh, Mose, and she was talking about how you know I was I think I, she was maybe coaching me a little bit at the time, and I was talking about how I was getting into the seventies and I was. Uh, focusing on free immersion and she was like well now every single dive that you have to do no matter how deep it is like you don't start free falling until you hit 35 meters like minimum you know mm-hmm. and at that point i was i think i was starting my free falls much earlier mm-hmm. and i'm like so if i'm doing a 40 meter dive i start she's like yeah you start free falling at 35 because if you you have to train your body again and again specifically to to get the right speed and the right rhythm for well, that i that think there is not uh there is not one way because you and me, we are different. William Trubridge and me, we are different. Me, I have 15% of ma- of uh, fat mm-hmm. and he has 8%. Mm-hmm. So if I if I uh, weight myself, say, than Morgan Bushi, I, I, I don't reach 120 mm-hmm. because I'm, I, I am floating too much mm-hmm. and I have mm-hmm. different lungs than him. I have less... Uh, bone density mm-hmm. I have less muscle so every you have to adjust so uh, uh, for Alexei Molchanov he has a natural legs mm. that are already muscle that are already making him to to sink mm. so he don't need to put mm. weight so maybe he can sink earlier than mm. you or than me mm-hmm. so every you have to find your 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 way there is no dogmas mm. in freediving that okay you do this because uh uh, William Trubridge or Guillaume Neri does this. No, you, are, you con- you- are you contradicting Julia? We might have a little bit of a controversy. No, on Julia, you. Julia is uh, my secret love. We, we love you, Julia. We Julia, she did, she was my my coach and my organizer mm. in my world record attempt in Bali. And you know why she knows so much? Not only because she is a good free diver, but she was with the best free divers in the world mm. there day by day. Mm. She was with me the two or three months that I was there with my problems my thoughts my ideas my frustrations mm. hey julia we should do this i don't know maybe you start to go like that we have discussions you know this uh, girl i'm not saying that julia but you know this girl in the uh, himalayas that she's on in nepal in 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 Kathmandu. i think she's there now but uh, in Kathmandu, and everybody go has who's been on the top of the 8000 meters mountain has to go there and explain what did you see this? What is there that? And then they explain, say, yeah, this guy has been there, up there. No? Julia is a kind of this uh, kind uh, of uh, yeah, yeah, woman yeah, yeah, yeah. who knows because she's been with many top athletes mm-hmm, mm-hmm. learning what they do down there. You don't need to be there sometimes. No? Of course, if you've been there, 
you have the knowledge, but Julia has this knowledge as a coach of many top islands. Yeah, yeah. Julia has been on the show four times now, I think. Yeah, it's a lot. Why, why so many times, Julia? She just keeps asking me. She begs me. You, yeah, <laughs> all the time she's up. calling. Whenever <laughs> I get tired, I can't take it. I say, okay, we do another one. Jeez, what do you want to talk about this time? <laughs> what are you talking about now? Eh? <laughs> um okay one more uh we're gonna skip by fins and pool because nobody cares about nah, that this is horrible <clears throat> yeah, i think <throat> the people who is a uh, pool diver they don't have soul yeah. we only included monofin out of respect for the history of the sport um <laughs> oh but no fins we have to do no yeah, fins yeah, yeah okay it. so uh, no fins is i mean i'm sure we we discussed this before, but it's the most technical of the disciplines, the most complicated. It's the most, uh, for most people, it's the most challenging. I know that when I have programmed for myself some no fin session, I, I mean, I, I always in my mind, I have this like, oh, I'm lo looking forward to training no fins now. But then once I'm actually in the water, you know, I've programmed like five times 25 with a minute break or something like that. And all of a sudden I feel like I'm back at school again and I have to sit some uh, mm -hmm. uh, exam. Yeah. Um, so what's, what's your, uh, what's the number one piece of advice for aspiring no fins uh, divers? <clears throat> First of all, I think people who say that uh, no fins is the purest one. And uh, this is just marketing because they want to sell that they are good on one discipline. Mm. Why is, why is mm. more pure? This is not, mm. There's no reason on that because you use no the hands. That, well, okay, the other you pull, but they did this. The pearl people who go in, or uh, I don't know, with, with using fins. So it's just to make you feel that you are better because you do no fins. This is not really true. All disciplines are amazing if you want to train and you want to enjoy. And you have we have to have respect for all athletes in any discipline, even in the pool. Mm, huh? Even in the even pool. In the pool. Take that, but, Jordy. <laughs> but um, yeah, I say I would say that uh, in no fins, the problem is, of course, is you need to propose just with your hands and your arms and your legs. So it's important weights and uh, wetsuit. It's very very important. Of course, if you are in a, in the beginning of the season, it's cold. Okay, put a five mil, put five kilos, and then train shallow, 30, mm. 40 meters or whatever, mm. all the time. And then you get strong and you get once the summertime it's thin suit with two kilos then boom it's so good no uh, so it's, so i think to adjust properly the me i went to 88 with uh, two millimeters two millimeters uh, wetsuit and three and a half kilos for most of the divers i remember i don't know uh william or, or mad malina or um, um morgan Morgan, Alexei, all they have half kilo, zero kilo, yeah, yeah, yeah. super low. Grams. So like yes, grams, but yeah. if I do this, I cannot reach. Yeah, yet. but Miguel, is your lungs, your lungs are like four times the size of every normal no, human. No, huh? no, no. Uh, ask how much liters have uh, Man Malina. The difference in, in between us is mm. first because I need, probably because I never train enough gym to have a, a strong heart that get uh, low down, their heart rate down mm. fast or running or anything mm -hmm. that you need uh, more more aerobic training. Yeah. Uh, also, they may have some more muscles and more density on the bones and the, the fat, but I didn't, I had to choose because uh, I have to train, I have to work. I ha so I did, okay, I'm gonna train this. So I add one more kilo. It's good enough for me because, because I'm not gonna black out because one of the good things of me is that I black out four times in my career. For my mother, is four times more than what she wants. Yeah. But for the free diving, it's not yeah. that bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not good because it's better zero. Yeah. But I did three attempts world record and I mm. black out. And one time I black out on, at 86 on mm. uh, That's world, on world championship in yeah. Nice. <clears throat> but not because of me. It was because of the organization. It was uh, yeah. bad, bad decisions, let's say. By the way, that's one of the most... Uh, Although free diving competitions are incredibly boring to watch, that is quite an entertaining 20 minutes in free diving history. If you want to look it up on YouTube and you can watch uh, Will, Alexi, and Miguel all black out <laughs> all in a out. row. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the problem for, for Alexi was easy because the one was the first on blacking out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the hard was for me because I was waiting on the platform right, and yeah. then uh, Alexi, boom, yeah, blackout. Yeah. Okay, nice. Then I go to the water and then I listen. Uh, William Travis, blackout. And, go, and I say, okay, after the two yeah, yeah. best in the world, now it's my yeah, turn. Yeah. Maybe I black out too. And we were shivering mm. and conditions are, were very bad. I never, never black 
out in a no frills mm. uh, training. Maybe I didn't push enough, could be, but well, 80, 90 meters, no frills is a good dive. Yeah, I always uh, use that that section for uh, when I do my courses and I have to explain about blackouts. So I just put that on and just think this is good <laughs> because you'll get to see three very different blackouts. You know. Um, yeah, uh, I never blackout, mm. by the way, never a blackout on the surface. Mm. I always blackout underwater. Ah, okay, so yeah, you dis distinguish yourself from the yeah, other guys. I'm a good yeah. blacking and uh, I yeah. make the safety work. Yeah. <laughs> if you're going to blackout, do it right. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I mean, uh, yeah. It's so good talking to you, man. Like every time I talk to you, I, I get the sense and the feeling that free diving is a uh, joy for you, and you love it. Sure. And you know, it's like you you haven't become uh, disillusioned by by doing the sport for such a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, even though we discussed um, concepts again that we probably discussed in the past, and of course we're always talking about the same thing on this podcast, I still think that we got some really new. Uh, um, it was a nice way that you uh, you answered those questions. So thank you for that. Just to take us out and to finish up, I just want to know, like, uh, what are your plans um, for yourself? Because, you know, you're one of the deepest men in the world and we'd love to see you uh, stepping back up to take on Petar and, you know, those guys. <laughs> uh, any chance of that happening? You know, uh, luckily, freediving is a, uh, is a sport that you it can be long, Mm. Uh, we can, I'm 44 yeah. years old. Mm -hmm. Probably I could be on a very good shape still for the next five or ten years. Mm -hmm. um, I still love the idea of training. I, I do it, but not like before. Uh, training, I mean going to the sea, stay mm -hmm. two months here, going to Honduras with my friends Rotan, going to Bali with Julia, stay there, train. This lifestyle, I love it. Of course, my life has changed. I have two kids, uh, the four and six years old. What is different when I have one kid was easy because I could travel, but two kids is much yeah, more work yeah. and it's difficult for my wife also to, when I'm traveling. But I have this feeling of uh, of the desire to train, but I don't have the motivation for competition in reality. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Maybe I go to, I don't know, vertical blue one day, mm -hmm. I stay one month, then it's mm -hmm. okay, at the end of the month there's the competition, maybe boom, I, I yeah. jump and I go. Mm -hmm. But uh, like planning competitions, actually, I'm at home seeing the live uh, stream and they, one minute, I say, oh, one minute. Uh, when you are in the water, it's okay. But when you're in the boat, you listen to another one. So the night before of a record, all of this, you have to be in a very relaxed situation. And I'm not uh, convinced yet to get motivated mm -hmm. on that, no? And I just need some time to 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 have the time to go somewhere yeah. and stay there. No? Yeah, yeah. But uh, I don't say no. Many people ask me, and I think it's good for for my career. I don't need it because luckily we could uh, train. I could train for many years. I could open the schools. I, I I'm still on training and with on the freediving community. But it's nice that many people tell me, hey, come, it's good to have you in the mm. competition and it, but yeah, maybe when the child's a bit uh, older, I can have some time. All right. So when you, we'll see. when you're training again and you're, you're shooting for competition again, we'll, we'll do another interview and, uh, sure getting into those we we start train together yeah sure and then yeah. we do uh yeah, yeah we do a talk okay let's see how far we get awesome miguel <laughs> thank you so much it's a pleasure mucho gracias amigo thanks to you and uh thank you for um also for the place for the school and the environment that you took part in creating here mm. um you know it's uh, it's you know a very important uh thing for free diving in, in dahab of course now it's much bigger than dahab free divers but um Thank you for another interview. Thank you. It's a dives. pleasure that you are here with us and the job that you're doing uh, altruistically sometimes. Uh, but <clears> I think <throat> you have the Patreon and all this stuff. So I think it's important to keep this uh, kind of, uh, of spaces of sharing that people love it. Even if we spend like one hour and a half and people say, okay, I'm going to listen one hour and a half. But uh, maybe they give you some small tips that boop, may help and yeah, change their yeah. mind. For yeah, you know, I mean, they're out of the, you know, sometimes 10,000 people download this podcast every month, which I think yeah, is pretty good. Lot. And maybe maybe there's 500 people in the world who just fucking love it. Like yeah. they can't get enough. They're saying like, 
hey, I listened to all 150 episodes. When are you bringing out something new? I was like, dude, man, like, I mean, I, I don't even listen to them. You know, it's, it's like, uh, but uh, so even if there's just. But it's true that maybe now it's like 15 years later, I start freediving. But when I was starting freediving, I was so hungry about yeah, uh, yeah. information that yeah. we didn't have yeah. at that moment. Okay, Erika Shagatai had a, yeah. this uh, book and that, yeah, the yeah, thesis yeah. and this. Yeah. was difficult to find. Yeah. Not difficult, yeah. like yeah. maybe Umberto Spellizzari yeah. time, that yeah. was even more, yeah. but was not easy. And I was so hungry for uh, literature yeah. about freediving and I was interested about anything. No, mm. That's why I decided to say, okay, I want mm -hmm. to leave because it's, I'm, I love mm. so much this. No, So there is 500 people uh, yeah. crazy enough like us uh, even if there's just it. one i'll still keep doing it you know i don't make much out of it but the goal to create the best uh, uh the best uh almost like a library mm. of knowledge about mm. this very very interesting sport i think it's in a sense it might even be complete now yeah. which is why we move into like um different kinds of media with the videos and doing the video interviews like this yeah. which of course you know we're moving with the modern times you know yeah. 10 years ago, you only had the Deeper Blue forums yeah, and you'd exactly. get a PDF through email from Eric Fata yes, or something like yes. that. But no, we move forward. But I think the Free Dive Cafe as it stands, I think, uh, you know, I, I succeeded with the plan there. And uh, if people still listen to it, then yeah. thanks. But this is true. Sorry to extend it, but just to finish and myself. It's true that um, I think uh, if you go into... This is very technical, what we were talking. Maybe only the most uh, interested about freediving, specifically, they, they will listen. But if you open it, as you say, to more the, the character, the person, because we are not only freediving. If you mm. ask me about my life and what I do mm. besides freediving, mm. maybe it gets things interesting. Yeah. And I'm mm. sure people who explore freediving to some certain limits, like Guillaume Neri or like Alexei or all these I'm saying just few of them, no? Uh, maybe you ask them about other uh, moments of things of, on their life. Maybe you get surprised. And maybe this goes into like a generic podcast, you know? Mm -hmm. People listening, somebody who has experience, extreme experience. Like, I don't know, Alexei, mm -hmm. he did a, a world record attempt. After three days, he blacked out a hand, going to 128. Mm -hmm. What passed through his mind? How he could control this situation? For most of us, we say, um, just giving up I will do it in a few months mm -hmm. no but this you have to be a special personality to mm -hmm. do things like that mm -hmm. no? not mm -hmm. only about technical freediving how to recover no just how you manage the yeah. mental part of the things like yeah. that yeah anyway yeah. okay thank you so pleasure. much pleasure nice talking to, to you. see you yeah thanks brother okay